All right, welcome back to part three of uh, Mad Dog Masterclass. We're here in the uh, McDonnell Douglas MD82. Uh, just, uh, I think we just started our descent. Yes, we did. VNAV descent right there, and it already wants some drag required. So we're going to go ahead and give it some speed brake. It's trying to drop us down quite quickly here to get us down to our uh, requirement. We're in, uh, we're in VNAV and, uh, and NAV mode, so it's doing it all for us. We did all of our prep and setup for the descent. Uh, right at the end of the uh, the last part. So if you missed any of that, uh, you want to go back to that one and see that. Uh, at this point, we're in the descent, and we're going to bring this thing all the way down to landing in San Jose. Uh, the only thing we changed from the star is that we changed Clyde over here on our uh, route, our legs page, uh, from an adder above 4,000 to a, a hard 4,000 because it's the initial approach fix and the altitude for the initial approach picks is 4,000. So uh, while it's not required that we be at 4,000, it would behoove us to be at 4,000. So we're gonna do that. Um, I never turn the seatbelt signs off, but at some point here, you'd wanna make sure you turn those back on for the passengers if you did turn them off. Uh, again, you're just checking, making sure pressurization and things are happening right. The cabin's descending, and uh, we need to do a uh, descent checklist now that we've started our descent here. So let's go to our documents, normal checklist, hit the down arrow to get the second ones, and uh, we're gonna do our descent checklist. So the MSA, we did check that, that was 5,600 feet at San Jose. Approach landing briefing, we kinda went over that in our um, previous video, so that is done. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, MDF, or really the minimum descent altitude, uh, it's like the minimum descent fix, um, I think is what that is. And uh, we have that set for us for 200. We're gonna be on the ILS, so we're just gonna be a 200 radio that is set up. Landing data is all confirmed. We did our uh, checks and, and put our data in here for that. Um, and we're expecting about 124, 900 for the uh, weight of the airplane on landing. V-bugs are also set right here. They're all set up. Our, uh, our um, V-ref is a 136. Radio altimeter and auto marker are set on, so the uh, the radio minimums, radio altimeter, we don't turn that off. The auto marker stuff is all set up automatically. The, the things are tuned up. That all got tested in the beginning, so we're good there. Hydraulic system. Now, um, you can do this at any time. I like to do this generally passing around 20,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and do it now just because we're reaching that point of the checklist. And that is to put the hydraulic pumps back to high and the aux and trans pumps on. You wanna make sure you do that before you start throwing out gear and flaps and slats and all that stuff. And we'll also make sure we put the uh, speed brake back in seeing as we're below the uh, target speed. Uh, let's see, and then pressurization checked and set. So again, we would double check that we have our uh, descent field elevation here. Uh, we can move this down a little bit as it went down to 2987 on the uh, altimeter. And we are in descent mode there, so that's all happening nicely. And so that is the descent checklist complete. Uh, the approach checklist we would usually do anytime below uh, 10,000 feet and then obviously the final landing checklist we do once we're configured for landing and we've been cleared to land and all that stuff. So uh, that's where we are with that. And from now on we're just going to be very attentive to the different aspects of the landing. It can be very easy to get behind especially when someone like me is explaining how to do everything. I filmed this once already and uh, completely botched the approach and so we're filming it again because I did not like how it came out. Got way behind the aircraft. Made a great landing but uh, it was uh, it was definitely not a, uh, a, a how to do or what to do, it was a what not to do and that's not, <laughs> that's not the plan for uh, these tutorials so uh, yeah, it can be easy to get behind if you're explaining. So once again, uh, our uh, auto brakes are armed, but we can't uh, arm, uh, sorry, they're set to medium, but we can't arm them until the flaps go to 28. That's a, the, the smallest landing flap designation. Also, if you use dial-a-flap, you wanna make sure you're back in stow at this point. We do not use dial-a-flap for the landing, only the takeoff. And uh, it's rare that I use dial-a-flap, but uh, so make sure you're in stow. Uh, that's something you can always do at the uh, top of climb. Uh, for part of the cruise if you want to, but uh, I rarely need to check because I'm rarely using a, 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 a dial-a-flap. 
And then once again, we're not allowed to use the, the flaps and the spoiler in conjunction with each other, except when the wheels touch the ground and they go into a ground spoiler. So just be aware of that. Passing 20,000 feet. Just want to be following and making sure the aircraft is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, so you're watching the legs. Uh, we're coming up on ouch. We need to be between 16,000 and uh, flat 190. So we're just about to hit 190. So we should be right on. We're right on flight path. So that's good. Aircraft is doing a good job. Uh, this little indication will show you if you're above or below the um, the the expected uh, descent path. So if this thing is way down here, you are high. If this thing is way up here, you are low. So if it's if it's up here, it's easy just to level off and wait till you intercept it. If it's low, you're going to have to dive and probably speed break out to try and get below that flight path. And that usually happens if you happen to miss your top of descent point and did not have your stuff set. Remember, you need to have it not only set, but armed and showing over here so it can descend if it's in VNAV. If you're not in VNAV, this just says like alt hold or something like that. It's not going to auto capture. This needs to be in VNAV to auto capture. Otherwise, you've got to do it on your own using uh, vertical speed or IAS. And uh, IAS is very rarely used for descending. It's usually for climbing. Uh, usually you're going to use vertical speed for descending if you're not using VNAV. All right, at uh, 18,000 feet, we'll go ahead and switch over to uh, local altimeter setting. Right now we're 2992. 2987 is current uh, altimeter setting over in San Jose. I think it was 2987 actually. Let me. I'm doubting myself. It'd be hilarious. It was like 2997. Or seven. No, 2987. Good. Okay. So 2987. We'll set that right there, and we'll set the standby. It's too far. 2987, and we we'll verify on the FOs. But again, I have them tied together. Okay, so that is good. Everything is proceeding nicely. At this point, below transition, you could ding the uh, flight attendants, let them know, hey, you better be getting the cabin ready. We're going to be below 10,000 before you know it. Uh, by the way, on the, uh, the wing landing lights, these can actually be extended, believe it or not, anywhere in the valid flight envelope. So as long as you're below the barber pole, you can pull those out and you're not going to rip them off the plane. They are amazingly sturdy. <laughs> Just kind of interesting. And they actually do provide a little bit of drag. So if you need to get down, you can actually pull those out too a little bit just to help in addition to the spoiler if you ever need to do that. And if you're wondering where those are, in fact, let's go ahead and pull them out now since we can. We'll go out here and you can actually see them deploying right here. They actually slowly extend. And amazingly, they are good all in all sp speeds of the valid flight envelope. <laughs> so those are your two landlines. Now, say we extended them, we didn't turn them on. We just we just extended them. So you got one on each side, and then obviously there's the light on the uh, nose wheel is the, the taxi light. So they add just a little bit of drag. I mean, obviously not much, but it's something. They're in the slips. They're in the, uh, the airstream there. So. And in an air, older aircraft like this, uh, it's good to be monitoring how it's doing on the descent, but don't trust it to get you to where you need to go. Be prepared to intervene and manually do what you need to do. If you think for any moment that you're going to be too high, too fast at a certain point, go ahead and intervene. It's, it's not one of those where you want to go, oh, it knows what it's doing. Uh, no aircraft really should be trusted like that, but this is, you know, older nav systems, older, older VNAV system. You want to definitely be pilot in charge. The automation is there to help you. You are not there just to monitor it. This is not an Airbus. Sometimes you need to fly the plane. And that's why I like this aircraft, because it's a little bit more hands-on, it's a little more work. And because of that, it's fun. Doors closed back there. 
if we go over here, you will see we get a little bit of wing flex on the wing. This does flex a bit. I've actually been on a real MD-80 a number of times, and they, they flex around quite a bit. Feels a little bit rubbery, but that's, that's actually legit. That's our aileron there, and those are the tabs that you're actually controlling. You're not actually controlling directly the aileron. You're controlling the tabs, and that's flying the aileron. And that's why you will find a lot of times you have to uh, give it quite a bit more left and right aileron to get the aircraft to do what you want to do. And because of that, it can be a little unnerving flying it with a stick because you don't have nearly as much travel with a stick. So you go from no control, no control, no control to like, oh, full control. And so it can feel like you've got a serious dead zone. So if you're using a stick, you're probably going to have to go in and uh, mess with the, um, the uh, uh, control curves a bit more than you would otherwise have to if you have a yoke. You also might have that problem if you have a yoke that only has a 45 degree throw. Uh, the Honeycomb has a 90 degree throw. Uh, the SciTech and the CH I think have 45s. Uh, the Boeing yoke by, uh, by Thrustmaster has a, has a 90 degree throw. Uh, so those will all give you a much more accurate uh, feel <coughs> of the uh, controls than a stick would. Not, not that you can't fly this with a stick, but if that's what you got, that's what you got. All right, we're about to go below 10,000, so we'll go ahead and flip the landing lights on. I'm also going to put the nose light to dim, and I do that because I only want one position before I get to bright, um, just for me, like that. Um, typically, when uh, we get our landing clearance, that's when I would throw that on to bright as a memory device that says, yep, we got our landing clearance. Obviously, today, uh, that's not going to be an issue. Oh, we got a drag requirement again. I don't know why suddenly it has this falling out of the sky. I think, it, oh, I think it was because it was trying to slow us down. Kind of at the last minute. So it's going to bring us back into profile here. I don't think, remember, it wasn't prepared to be at uh, 4,000 at Clyde normally. And so it's uh, speed wise, it's going, oh crap. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the spoiler out until not only am I back on profile, but the speed comes back down to where I expect it to be over there. Now you see we have a glide slope and loke fail. That just means it's not picking them up yet. We'll probably get the localizer live before we get the glide slope. And there we go. We go back out on the spoiler. And at this point, we're at that 240 mark. I'm going to go ahead and bring the, the slats out. So you're going to see this isn't going to move, but we're going to get the takeoff slats right there. And that's going to put us there. So now we can go below uh, the alpha floor if we need to. And it's at this point that I'm going to go ahead and take over manually at the speed. So I'm going to go FMS override and we're going to go 230 because we're supposed to be 230 at uh, Clyde, I do believe. Yeah, 2.30 at Clyde, which we're coming up to here in a moment. And then once we pass Clyde, I'll go ahead and bug down to 180. It won't capture it immediately. That's okay. <clears throat> but then we can start getting out our uh, more uh, flaps and slats. So we're already much better <laughs> as far as profile goes than we were before. Oh, okay, you can see the localizer is alive now. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to arm ILS. ILS is armed. What ILS is, you could also arm a VOR loc, um, but all that will do is capture the localizer. The ILS will capture the localizer and the glide slope as they come in. But it doesn't have to have both. It can capture the localizer and then we'll get the glide slope when it's available. So it's going to bring us around and again you see loc capture right there. So it's captured the localizer. We're still on VNAV. And so actually I want to start going down a little bit because we're not getting that glide slope yet. And we're going to switch over to vertical speed because I don't want to go back to VNAV or it's going to take me out of my speed mode. And we're going to go down to 180 knots now. Start slowing that down. There's the glide slope. Okay, I'm going to shallow the glide slope out now. 
so we can capture that because we're a little bit below it. And we'll go ahead and bring that in. Uh, approach checklist, uh, cabin signs are on, fuel is uh, all set, and fuel pumps are on, and the altimeters and bugs are set, 2987 set cross check, so that's good. <clears throat> Alright, we're getting close to 210, I'll go ahead and go flap 11. Flap 11 is coming down. And there's glide slope capture. So now we are captured on the ILS. Loke and glide slope capture. Loke track and glide slope capture. And now glide slope track. So we're good there. There's 200. As we go below 200, we'll go flaps 15. In a little bit here. You also do not want to arm the speed brake until your gear is down and locked. So that's why I haven't done that yet. And we're within 10 now the runway. I'm going to go ahead and go gear down. That'll help us uh, lose some speed too because it's having trouble getting below 200. That'll bleed the speed back off. And then we can go flaps 15. Flaps 15. Flaps 15. Give us a little bit more oomph. Gear is down, so we can go speed brake armed. And I'll usually wait to, to bug down to, uh, to V ref until we get within 5 miles. Or 2,000 feet, whichever one we get first. So there we go, let's go ahead and bug down to VREF plus 5, so 136, that's going to be 141, and we're going to go flaps 28, flaps 28. at flaps 28 we can arm the, the auto brake. We're also localizer and glide slope captured now, so we're going to set our uh, go around altitude, which was uh, 1900, and we're going to set GA on the uh, TRP. And there's pass 160, so flaps 40. And 1000, we are fully configured. Flaps 40. Landing gears down, three green flap slats are 40 extended, speed brakes armed, auto brakes armed, engine ignition goes to both, and EOAP is clear. Landing clearance received, we'll say. We're all set, and we're going to go ahead and disconnect the autopilot. We'll leave the auto throttle in for a little while longer until we get uh, a little closer. Remember this is a uh, T-tail, so you do not want to get low and slow because uh, you'll end up in extreme angles of attack trying to maintain altitude. So altitude control, very important. And there's a very extended threshold here at San Jose, so don't let that fool you. Where that kind of black starts is where the uh, landing zone is actually at. Landing. Okay, the auto throttle's out. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Beautiful. Fly the nose wheel down. Nose wheel touches. Reverse. Full reverse. Full reverse. Break. 60 knots. 60 knots, idle reverse. Reverse lights back. Went down a little further than we thought. This is going to be Lima, it looks like. That's okay. 
wasn't breaking as hard as I could have braked. Once we're clear of the runway, we'll go flaps up and spoiler retract. Again, you want to verify your auto brakes are off by that light being uh, being on there. It's very helpful to have the auto brakes the the auto brakes arm bound to a switch because it's supposed to disable when you hit the the brakes manually. But under certain conditions, you have to hit them just right, and it doesn't always go out, and you end up stopping on the runway. So I have a, a, a disconnect button that I hit and just do that way. All right, we are clear of the runway, so we can go ahead and turn off the auto throttle and the flight direction. Oh, the auto throttle is already off. The flight direction go off. We can clear the TRP by hitting the test right there. We can go up and uh, turn off the engine auto ignition. We can get the uh, APU starting to run up. We can turn off the, uh, the pitot heats as well. And the after landing checklist is right here. And before I do that, actually, I'm going to call GSX and tell them to get me ready at gate 23. Slow down here a little bit. Gate 23. Uh, no, I don't need to follow me. Okay, so support. All right, so after landing, flap and slat lever is up and the lights are out. The auto brake is disconnected, but uh, that needs to go off. We need to open up the pneumatic cross speed, so I'm going to do that right now. I've got that set up on my Bravo as well. Uh, speed brake lever is retracted. Engine ignition selecting is off. The pitot sack heaters are off. Airfoil engine anti-ice we didn't even use, so it's off. And the weather radar needs to be off as well. That's what this is yelling at me about. Don't run or radiate people on the ground. And there's our guy right there. Landing lights should be off at this point too. We can go to dim on the nose light and actually as we turn in, we can just turn that off. Nope, that's 14. That's Microsoft. Never mind. Don't be fooled. I've fallen for that before. <laughs> Fallen for that before. Yeah, there's no. Uh, nice try, Microsoft. They put their own little guys in random places, and it's easy to fall for that if you have GSX. Thankfully, I knew what gate I was going to, so I saw 2014 and went, nope, that's not us. We're further down. We're closer to those Southwest jets down there. Hilarious. Um, also, after landing, you can go ahead and turn the uh, aux and trans pumps off. Leave the uh, engine hydraulics on high because they'll go off with the engine. Clear that guy. Maybe. There's our GSX guys. I recognize my baggage carts. Turn in here. 23 confirmed. Set. Make sure you're not holding the brakes when you do that, otherwise it will uh, spring back on you. And let's see, can we connect the jetway? Yes, we can. While the jetway is connecting, we can go up here and make sure APU generator is on. It is. We can go APU air. Set on. We've got the pneumatic cross feeds open, so that's going to be fine. And we can kick the engines off. Engine's coming off. Seatbelt sign can go off, and the uh, make sure you put the uh, anti-collision off so the uh, chocks go in. And 
we can also open up the flight deck door. And that's connected, so we can go over here. And we should be able to say D board. Sometimes I find I have to open the door myself. And in a moment, they should start to deboard. There it goes. So you see them appear here, they'll start to exit the aircraft. There we go. It's a good old GSX. All right, and that is us down at San Jose. We do need to do the uh, the uh, after the shutdown checklist here, so we'll do that here in a second. I want to kind of get a nice shot of this. There we go. It's kind of cool. All right, so we will go ahead and do the uh, after landing check or the after uh, the shutdown checklist. That's after landing parking checklist. Here we go. Uh, fuel tank pump switches, so we can turn them all off, except we need to leave one on for the APU, so we're going to leave that guy there. Uh, ox and trans hydraulic pumps, we already did that, they're off. And the parking brake is set. And then if we're leaving the airplane, we would turn off all the power and all that stuff, kind of like the opposite of what we did. Also, should turn off the uh, transponder. Again, we're not on the network, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, turn that off there. And uh, if you're doing another leg, you would just start to set up for a uh, for another leg. And that's all you have to do. To uh, get the ACAR stuff to reset, you would just come over here and uh, import your new flight plan or your your new uh, stuff there. Now, the other thing you want to do is set up. You want to turn flight mode off, and we check the electric technical log, and there's a transit check. And if the doors open and the flight mode's off, we can hit request transit check. And uh, what the maintenance guys will do, they'll come out and they'll look at your um, oils and stuff and brakes and, and make any adjustments and repairs as needed uh, and increase fluids if they need to, too. So if this is low, you might see this jump back up to like 16. Uh, it's 13 right now, but the engines are still kind of spooling down, so the sump is still kind of refilling. So this may go back up to 14 here in a little bit and, and even 15, who knows, uh, before it's all done. So kind of cool there again the maintenance things uh, that are built into this aircraft are pretty cool uh, if you're not flying with failures it doesn't matter but I think failures is a cool way to do it but that is how uh, we fly the uh, McDonnell Douglas um, again you can fly that with the ILS uh, all the way to the to the end there you could do full auto land uh, but again you want to make sure you have both those radios tuned if you're going to do that way but it's 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 very it, it hand flies very nicely. It's uh, it's an easy aircraft to control. The uh, hardest thing is just you know kind of the extra steps that are required to fly it correctly compared to say like an Airbus that will fly it for you. <laughs> uh, but once you get it down, it's a fun aircraft to fly. I've flown this all over the place. I've flown in many many uh, Vatsim events, and it's just it's such a cool aircraft. So I hope uh, this video was helpful. Uh, we're going to do another one of these, uh, so there's there's a whole other module that is this same flight, but it's with the Canadian Marconi. So the Marconi FMS, which is a little bit more rudimentary, and it has the PMS here for uh, vertical guidance, and that's going to be the next one. So if you have already mastered the MD-80 and you want to learn how to fly it with the, uh, the Marconi, which I think is a lot of fun, uh, come check that video out. That's going to be uh, the next module. Again, also a three-part series uh, going through the whole aircraft uh, with the Marconi. And hopefully the holding feature is working now too. So check that out if you want a challenge. Uh, otherwise, uh, hit the, uh, the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel. Come check me out over on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Mustafa. I stream multiple times a week. Uh, mostly flight sims, some other stuff as well. If you have any comments or things you saw I did wrong or missed, uh, I'm human. I probably did miss some things or maybe even did something wrong or maybe you had a different SOP at your airline uh, than what I'm, I'm, I'm using stuff that I found out of the Continental SOP. I've also talked to a guy that flew for American, so I've gotten some of the tips from him uh, that flew this aircraft. But, uh, you know, different airlines do stuff differently, and that's okay, and that's cool. Uh, if you uh, notice something different or another way to do something or another recommendation, Go ahead and put that in the comments. Uh, again, be kind about it, I would ask. 
And um, or if the best way, if you need help or questions or comments, uh, join the Discord. The link is in the description below, and uh, you can get uh, much quicker help that way and uh, from a lot more people than just me and some real airline pilots, too, that are in there. So hope you found this enjoyable. Hope you found it helpful. This has been a long time coming for me doing this. I keep, I've been trying to get this done since January, and every time I like got started, I'd, I'd get stuck somewhere or something didn't go right, and then I got busy with work, and then they came with another update. I had to learn something else. And uh, so, yeah, I'm finally just powering through getting it done. I want to do some more aircraft like this, but uh, the Mad Dog is a labor of love for me because I really like this aircraft. So if anyone from Leonardo is watching this, um, just know I really appreciate your, uh, your attention to detail in this aircraft. It's, it's absolutely, as of this video, is my favorite aircraft in Microsoft Live Simulator and has been since it came out. So thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. again.